Hey guys, Big Time Collector 01 here, back at it again with another action figure review. And today, we'll be doing another face off, the first face off of 2023. As you can see, I have two Batmans right here. We have the Detective Comics 1000 Batman on the right over here. And on the left, we have the new blue and gray version of the Hush Batman. I just got this figure this week, and I'm very excited to do this face off, and I'm very excited to do this, you know action figure review for you guys it's been like a few it's been like two months since i haven't posted anything so this is gonna be very fun starting off with round one we have packaging and as you can see they're they're technically the same thing but we can definitely see some differences between the two starting off with detective comics 1000 batman and this is McFarlane's first Batman in the DC Multiverse line. This is actually one of their first figures in the DC Multiverse line. On the side, you get Batman Detective Comics 1000. Batman on the side. And on the bottom, you get the usual. You get the barcode. And uh, th there's a sticker covering it um, from Nolan. I did get this from a toy show. So whoever this Nolan guy is, thank you very much for sending this to that shop. And switching over to the Hush Batman, as you can see, it's technically the same thing. You get the window, you get Batman Hush on the side, and you get, you know, the same thing on this other side. Barcode on the bottom if you want to, you know, screenshot that. Here you go, so you can find it in store. I got this guy off of Amazon. And I wanted to save the back part of the packaging for the end of this round so you can see the major differences between the two. As you can see, you have the cover of Detective Comics 1000 on the back of, you know, Detective Comics 1000 Batman and an, an image from the Hush comic book story. But as you can see, the differences between the two packaging is night and day. You get a bigger image here and a smaller image right here, but you get the other figures from the, from the line. And as you can see, it's a it's a bit of, you know, it's changed. It's changed. And also, I, and I just noticed this, that this one has this plastic thing around the hook while this one doesn't. So I do like that. I do like this inclusion. It does keep the back from, you know, from crumbling. So for round one is going to be a tie. But I got to say, I do like seeing the differences between the two. We can definitely see the change of the line with the packaging. And we're going to see some more differences between these two figures once we get them open. Moving on to round two, we have accessories. They both come with your standard issue DC Multiverse base. <laughs> After all these years, there's still no difference between the two. Then they come with your trading cards. I really like these images. And on the back, you get a bio. And as you can see, there's already a difference. You can see that we get some stats. We get, you know, the height and weight of Bruce Wayne, while we don't anymore. If you want to read these bios, pause it right now. And before I, you know, move on to the other accessories, I just wanted to, you know, take a comparison between the trading card art and the actual comic. I do have the, the paperback. But now, taking a look at the true accessories, we have some differences. Starting off with the Detective Comics 1000. He comes with this really nice looking uh, grapple gun. I really do like how this one looks. I do like the shape of the, you know, the gun. It looks great. It's simple. It's painted silver. As you can see, it has this black rope coming out with the grapple at the end. really like the stylized, you know, coils of the rope. It's pretty cool. I, and I got to say, this is probably, you know, the best grapple we've gotten from McFarlane. And he comes with this thick-ass battering. Holy crap. Like, look how thick this thing is. But it does fit into his hand very easily. And, you know, it's basic shape. Basic battering shape. Moving on to the Hush Batman. Out of the package, he comes with these two open hands. He has a gripping hand on the left right here. And then this open hand from the on the right. I know this one is reused from the uh, two-pack version. I don't know where this one comes from. If this is reused, let me know. Start to hold his two batterings. Taking a look at just one of them, they're the same thing. It looks good. I do like the shape of it. It's pretty, pretty good looking. And, and as you can see, it's not as thick as the first battering we ever got. This one's much thinner. And then comparing it to the first Hush battering, I, I do like how this one looks better. But this one is more accurate to the comic book. And you can pop his hands out and replace them with these two fisted hands. And these look great. As you can see, they they have um like these little like rivets on the end which is not matching up with the other ones i know this is the three jokers mold 
But as you can see, he comes with another fist, and it has the kryptonite ring. Now, that is very accurate to the story, unlike the Batarang. And that is awesome. I do like it. We have an, we have the kryptonite ring, which is awesome, so you can have him fighting against Superman. But also, what makes me super happy is that we have a default-looking Batman with two fists. The Detective Comics 1000 Batman does come with a, you know, with a fair amount of accessories, and they are pretty good. And for their first figure, it's pretty great. But the Hush Batman comes with a lot more, and you have a lot more options with this guy. So this round goes to the Hush Batman. Moving on to round three, we have Paint and Sculpt. And there are a lot of differences between these two. Taking a look at the Hush Batman first, we can see that the head is completely new. And I do like this one a lot better. It looks great. I do like the paint on the eyes. You can see some black around the, you know, around the eyes over there. And then comparing it to the first Hush Batman, you can see it is, you know, night, a night and day difference. This one is so much better. And looking at the rest of the body, it looks good. I mean, again, it is the same thing as this, you know, 100% the same thing. But this one just came out a little bit sloppier. You can see some, you know, blue splotches on the chest symbol and on the and on the belt. But there are much more painted, you know, details on here. Look at that. We get shadows on that cape. Mmm, that looks so good. Looking down the arms, and we can see they fixed the elbows. Woo! We have, you know... You know, we don't have that damn blunder that they had with this, the first one. Finally. And with all that said, I, <laughs> I kind of still like how this one looks a little better. And I'm, the, the only reason because I actually, I love the Hush Batman design, but I like it in black. I, I like preferred 100% in black. Moving on, we have Detective Comics 1000. And as you can see, he has a completely unique head sculpt. Looks great. I do like it. Moving down to the torso. This is all new sculpting. This whole figure is completely unique. You know, that no other figure shares any of these body parts. Unless you want to count the variant to this figure. But I'm not. I gotta say, look, we got, you know, this big chest symbol. Not my favorite, but it is accurate. One of the biggest complaints about this figure when it first released were the proportions. As you can see, the, you know, the lower torso is a lot smaller than the upper torso. We have this awesome looking cape. I really do like how this looks. Probably one of my favorite McFarlane, you know, Batman capes. But it is kind of stiff. And looking throughout the figure, you get this nice texturing over here on the sides. I do like it. And runs up all the way. This new blue and gray Hush Batman looks great. It is such an improvement over the first one. You know, we get a better head sculpt. We get, you know, we don't have the mess up on the elbows. We don't get that blunder again. And overall, it just looks so much better. But in my opinion, I prefer the black. I do like black. Uh, you know, my Batman wearing black over blue. Um... I do really wish this figure had a black variant. I hope there is a black variant coming out. And overall, it's just reuse. It is, you know, it's mostly reuse. The only new parts we're getting, other than the hands, are the head. While the new Hush Batman looks a lot more like Jim Lee's artwork, it was reused. While this one is 100% new, unique sculpt. We have not seen this any of this these parts used for over like i don't know three years ever since this line started and that's great so for this round it goes to detective comics 1000 and then moving on to round four we have articulation starting off with the head we can already see that there's a difference between the two the detective comics 1000's head is on your normal dumbbell joint and while the hush batman is still connected to the neck it can look up that much and look down that much you can I mean, it's really, both are really good, but Hush Batman is definitely doing better. And both can rotate and pivot. Their shoulders can move up that much, and I'm surprised just to see how much, you know, this shoulder on the Detective Comics 1000 Batman can move up because I thought it'd be hindered by the cape. Speaking of that cape, you can't rotate the arm all the way around. Well, I guess you could, but it is still hindered by that cape. Hush Batman has no problem doing that whatsoever. Both have double jointed elbows that bend in that far. And both have a bicep swivel. Wrist balls that 
that rotate and hinge. I have a dumbbell joint in the in the ab and the diaphragm, and as you can see, they don't get much bend, but the hush bandman is bending forward a little more. Both don't need bane to break their back. They both also can rotate and pivot at the torso. The hips can kick forward that much. As you can see, the Detective Comics 1000 can kick forward a little bit more. You get a really good, you get a full split on the Detective Comics 1000 Batman. And with the Hush Batman, both have double jointed knees that can bend back that far. And both figures have ball joints at the ankle that can move down and up, rotate, and pivot. And both have toe joints. Both these figures have really good articulation, and you can definitely see some improvements, you know, from, you know, compared to the first figure to the most latest. But they are both very similar to declare a winner, so I'm declaring this round a tie. And before we move on to the final round, let's do some comparisons first. Measuring these two out, the Detective Comics 1000 Batman comes to around 7 and a half inches tall. Well, the Hush Batman is closer to seven and three quarters inches tall. And here they are next to the first Hush Batman. And as you can see with the two, you know, Hush Batmans, this new one is so much better than this one. I mean, they are essentially the same figure, but we can definitely see some improvements between the two. Here they are next to the two-pack version of Hush, and we could definitely use a new Hush. This one is way too short for this new Hush Batman. Comparing these Batmans to their respective Supermans, as you can see, you know, McFarlane still has to improve on their scaling. They have gotten a little better, but they still need to improve. I know this isn't the Hush Superman, this is the Rebirth Superman, but the Hush Superman did reuse the, you know, the whole body of this. And I can't wait for that new one to come out with the normal head. Ooh, I'm so excited. As you can see with these two, these are pretty good starts for the line. But, you know, there's, you know, differences between the two and they have definitely improved. And here's this new Hush Batman compared to some members of the Bat family. We have Red Hood, Nightwing, Batgirl, Damian Wayne Robin, and Catwoman from Arkham City. And I gotta say, I do like the scaling. I do like the scaling with this, you know, Hush Batman. This may be my new Bat Family Batman. Because, you know, he's pretty tall. I like Batman being taller than most of the, you know, cast of the Bat Family. And here's the Detective Comics 1000 Batman with them. And here's these two Batman are next to, you know, two pretty important Batman figures in McFarlane Toys. We have the Rebirth Batman and the Three Jokers Batman. And here are these two Batman um, compared to two different Jokers. And yeah, the, the Hush Batman is too tall for both of these. But you can definitely work work with the Detective Comics 1000 Batman. And here they are next to some Batman villains. We have the Penguin and Rachel Ghoul from Arkham City. And the Scarecrow from Arkham Knight. And for the final round, we have Price and... I got the Hush Batman off of Amazon for $22.99, and yeah, the price hike for the DC Multiverse figures has happened. But I can already see some improvements in the line, especially with this figure. And after taxes, it was $25, but I gotta say it was worth it, even with the reuse. We get a new head. We get, you know, some new, newly sculpted accessories. And we get a lot of accessories for this Batman figure, which is great. So, yeah, $25 feels definitely worth it. The Detective Comics 1000 Batman I got for $25 as well at a toy shop, from, you know, close to my house. Just, you know, if you do want to find, you know, get this Batman, your best bet is a toy shop somewhere like that, you know, aftermarket. I did check on Amazon not too long ago. This guy, you know, is still going for like 26 bucks. So not bad. Not bad of a price. So for this round, it's another draw. And for our face-off first, we have a tie. Both these figures are great. And as you can see, these guys are good sports shaking hands at the end. Yeah, a tie. Both these figures are great. I really did enjoy both of these figures. If I were to pick one, though, I would probably say Hush Batman is my favorite out of the two because, you know, 
he does i do have a space for him actually he's gonna be probably my new bat family batman but this detective comics 1000 batman is also really good and what do you guys think who do you think is better do you think you know hush batman should have won or do you think the detective comics 1000 batman should have won let me down now down in the comments below because i'm really curious to see what you guys think both these figures are great i do like the new sculpting on the on the detective comics batman it's really good and it's unique i'm always gonna take unique sculpting over reuse but i always loved that hush batman body and i'm so glad that they redid it and didn't mess it up so yeah i'm always happy about that and yeah that's my review i hope you guys enjoyed it because i really had i had a lot of fun making this and i had, was very excited to you know actually make it for you know for my channel because i've had this idea for a while and i've had this detective comics 1000 batman for like over a month and i was waiting for you know my pre-order from amazon with the hush batman finally came and yeah and that's another reason why i've been so long there's just no there hasn't been new figures coming out recently and you know finally we got something i got something new for you guys and you know I'm still here, you guys, so don't worry. I got more content coming your way. I got a lot more figures coming your way for review, and there will be more figures coming out soon. And I hope you guys, you know, are excited as I am. And again, if you have any suggestions for a face-off, let me know. I would love to hear your ideas. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review because I really enjoyed this face-off. I hope to catch you guys in the next one. See ya.